Hello, hey guys, welcome to another VRIT session. And um, today is October 20, 23rd. So we just got over from the second presidential debate yesterday. Um, so today we will uh, talk about parallel currencies, uh, parallel valuation, parallel accounting, anything to do with parallel, okay? So today we will see parallel, what is called parallel, right? So you know what's called so we talked about this a little bit yesterday. What's called parallel? So why do we, why? Okay. So in SAP, we have this parallel accounting concept. Okay, parallel accounting, valuation. You will hear this, right? Valuation and currency. So, so you often hear this. Um, I know you guys are beginning into SAP. I wanted to give a practical example so that how you can understand what exactly it's mean called parallel accounting, parallel valuation, parallel currency, and how you can easily connect to this, right? How you can easily understand this and how you can easily apply, right? So that's the whole goal. So, um, so let's talk about the parallel accounting, parallel valuation and parallel currency. First of all, let us talk about parallel currency and then, <clears throat> um, you know, and then we'll get a glimpse of what the other areas are, okay? And again, uh, I'm not going to do any configuration. Okay, this is more of a functional understanding, but I will actually show you in SAP where they define the parallel currency. And then I will also explain what is the you know, uh, meaning of valuation and parallel accounting. Can you configure something today and then see something in your hand? Of course not, okay? So this is not for configuration. So this is not something, you know, I'm going to give you a toy that you can play with, right? Um, this is more of giving an understanding. All right, great. Um, so what is called parallel currency? So first of all, let's talk about what is parallel? Can somebody tell me what's called parallel? I think we just, I mean, we just gave a small introduction yesterday, I believe everybody understand. So what is parallel? What exactly is called parallel? Okay. So this is gonna help you understand SAP. I mean, when you, when you open the SAP configuration with the help of Google, other networks, other forums, you can actually go to the configuration and find out. But if you go to the configuration, Right, so you should know where to hit the button, where to configure, where to enter, where to. So there's a lot of buttons that blow your face. So you have to understand the actual functionality. So that's a whole goal. All right, tell me somebody, what is called parallel? Najaf? Okay, I think somebody's speaking but on mute. Side by side. Side by side, okay, what's called parallel? Side by side, good. Side by side, okay. Alongside, right in line with, right? <clears throat> um, so think about this, um, you have a car, right? Um, we always call a parallel road, okay? A road that's parallel to each other, right? It could be opposite direction, it could be coming in the same direction, it's called parallel. Something that is running alongside, right? Running alongside, in line with you. Make sense? <clears throat> you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so running alongside in line with this called parallel. So why, let's say you drive a car, your friend drives another car in the same parallel road. You know, I think, uh, you know, Texas, there is a highway and there is a parallel road, side, they call it side road, right? So you could drive the car um, to some extent in the parallel in the side road, right? You will still, you know, he will still be with your, with, you know, reach your destination. She'll be with you in the same line, <clears throat> same distance, right? That's called parallel. That's called parallel road. Why do you have to have the parallel? Why do you have to have a parallel road, right? So let's let's take an example. Um, so your, your friend driving a car, he's driving a car. You guys going the same place, going to the same place, but you know, different cars and different lane. You are, so you say, hey, where's your, somebody call you and say, where's your friend? He said, yeah, he's right there driving the car in parallel with me, right? Parallelly. He's doing something, same thing that you do, but doing parallelly, right? But in a different road, correct? A company 
that runs, it does the same thing exactly, right? It runs the same operations, but in a different currency parallelly, right? So a company cannot operate in multiple currencies, right? <clears throat> it can only operate one currency. Let's say I buy something from you. Can I give in two currency? No, right? Here, here's a US dollar, here's euro, right? I cannot do that, right? The company can run in only one currency, but in parallel, okay, again, that's the word, this is called parallel. In parallel, they can have other, one more currency for the purpose of recording, make sense? Why they have to record it? <clears throat> okay, like simple example. Um, so again, same example that I gave. Let's say I, you know, uh, let's say I come from India and my dad sends me money, okay? I'm, I go to school here, my dad sends me money and I buy a car. <clears throat> so let's say my sense, let my, my dad sends about how much, <clears throat> you know, 1 million rupees. And then, well, he's not that rich though, but let's say just for example. So let's say he sends 1 million rupees to me and then I take the money, I, I do it for school and then I apply for my, you know, dorm and lodging and, you know, everything. Then let's say I buy a car and I have to report to my dad all the expenses that I do, right? Now here I spend in US dollars, right? Now, end of the week, end of the month, I have to report to my dad saying that, oh dad, this is all the money I spent. See, totally like 2000 US dollars. And he would not be able to make any sense of it because it's in US dollars. So he does not know the purchasing power of US dollars the cost of living of US dollars, the inflation index of US dollars in US. So what he wants to know is, oh, that's fine. Can he convert that into INR <clears throat> and tell me, right? That you usually do. <clears throat> when, you, when you talk to your dad, you don't say, I bought a car for $10,000, but you will say, you can't be bought a car for how much ever that is converted to INR. Make sense? <clears throat> and why you do that? <clears throat> because for reporting purposes. <clears throat> Make sense? <clears throat> You are reporting into your dad and your dad is the one who is sponsoring you for education. So you have to report into this. Now, what you have to do whenever you spend money in the back of your mind, you also have to think about calculating into INR. Make sense? So today you buy a car, great. You go and buy a shirt, great. You buy a, you know, <clears throat> you go to a restaurant and spend money, spend money, all this great. It's all in US dollars. But when it comes to reporting, you have to tell your family back in India how much you spend in terms of rupees or in, in, if your family in Nepal or Pakistan, whatever it is, right? You have to, this is called reporting currency. In order to report to, their, to your, <clears throat> the people, you have to establish a currency in SAP, right? So what does it do? Whenever you enter a transaction, right? System will automatically convert, <clears throat> okay? That local currency, which is your US dollars that you, the, that you bought the car, convert into automatically, you don't do, have to, you don't have to do any calculation. Right? In actual matter of fact, when you buy a car for $10,000, when you call your dad, you have to tell them how much in the INR, correct? <clears throat> but in SAP, it converts automatically based on the exchange rate that is actually maintained in SAP system. Okay, I think there's a transaction code starts with OB, either 52 or 58, OB 28, maybe whatever it is. <clears throat> you can find it. And I know the table is TCURR. That's the table, the exchange rate gets stored. Whenever we maintain, it gets stored there. Okay, so that's called Parallel currency. So far clear? Yes. 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 Now in SAP, how many currencies you can define? <clears throat> it depends, right? In ECC, they have allowed you to define three additional parallel currencies, mm -hmm. which you will see here. If you go back to additional local currencies, this is the menu path. <clears throat> So you go here, financial accounting, you go to company code, you go to uh, parallel accounting, and then you go to parallel currencies. <clears throat> so we also have parallel accounting. We have parallel valuation, okay? So all this, we will cover this today. Now, if you go here in parallel currencies, you <clears throat> click here, you will see select a company code. When you set up a company code, you can come here and <clears throat> create additional currencies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to see if I can take any of the existing company code that I already have. Um, what's the company code? 3333. So this is what we have been working on. So let's see. 
but it's already there, okay? Hero, mm, 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 mm. okay? So if you look at this, the first local currency is always your company code currency, okay? Why? It's a local. Your company is set up in, you are studying in US, right? You spend money in a local currency. So that's always your, when your company code is a local currency. And the zero is called legal valuation. And why is it called legal valuation? <clears throat> legal is called a statutory. It's called legal, right? When you report into the government, that's called legal. So same thing, when you buy a car, that's your local currency, right? You spend, and it's also legal because you pay tax on this, correct? <clears throat> yes. So that's called legal. And tomorrow IRS comes after you, you said, this is my receipt, this is my invoice, this is my bank account, this is how much I paid. It's all legal, right? Everything's documented, correct? On the other hand, okay, when you're converting this to, yeah, another currency for reporting purposes, okay, you don't have to have a legal valuation, correct? Because your dad, he doesn't care, right? He's not going to report anybody. You just tell him this how much I spend money, he's going to record it somewhere, correct? Yes, so that is called, that's the difference between legal valuation, okay? There's a provisional valuation, there's a group valuation, there's a bunch of valuations, we will see. But now you know what is a <clears throat> what is the different what is the legal valuation, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So same thing with the company. A company, when they run a company in the US, okay, the US dollars is a local currency, and they report to IRS, they report to the state, they report to the Fed based on the local currency. So that's called legal valuation, correct? Yes. Okay, so this is this is a Euro, this is a Euro based company, which, that's fine. Okay, now let's say my dad has another brother. Okay, sorry, I have another brother. He's studying in, let's say, UK. Okay, he's studying in UK and he spends money on GBP, Great British Pounds. Make sense? And he has a different company code, which is in Great British Pound. And then he spends money on GBP, correct? then he does the same thing. He goes and buys a car or he goes and buys a skating shoes or he goes and buys a, you know, go to a restaurant or brewer, whatever it is. He spends money there and then he records the transaction in the reporting currency, correct? Yes. And the reporting currency could be where the money money is coming from, it could be INR. So think about this, there are two different companies. Okay, one is in the US, one is in da -da 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 UK and they are running different currencies, the local currencies, okay? And then they report to the parent company, which is in India. <laughs> Make sense? That's called parent company, right? So parent company needs to know because you have to report to him. He says, how much you spend? Okay, Just tell me in INR. So he's going to take a, you know, he's going to write it down. So similarly, whenever you guys spend money, you have to convert this into, system will automatically convert this to the reporting currency when you define the system as a, second and third local currency. When you run a report, it is going to show you, right? You have an option to select which currency you want to display the report. Make sense? Now, the parent currency, when I say the parent, when I say the parent currency, it is also called group currency. Why? Because he is grouping the family, right? He is spending the money for all the family. That's called group currency. And you, all the entities report to your parent company in a group. Let's say, right? The money is coming from them right? The money is coming, all the cons consolidation happens in, in India. Make sense? It is also called a group currency. <clears throat> so in this situation, let's say in a, in, a, in a real situation, the group currency, your parent currency, you specify here as INR. Make sense? <clears throat> yes? Yes. Okay, now third local currency. So SAP has defined, they gave an opportunity to additional two parallel currency. One is first local, second local, and third local. This is always company code currency. We know this. So we define the parent currency. And third one is a local, third, one, third local currency. You can choose any currency, okay? Which you think is stable in the long run. And why? Because when you report, let's say in India, in Indian currency, there's a lot of fluctuation, correct? when you convert from GBP to India, when you convert from US dollars to GBP to AINR, there's a lot of conversion. The conversion is very volatile, correct? So when you run a report, let's say, when you convert, let's say this is a situation, right? So let's say I spend 
on a car for ten thousand dollars today and convert I and R, it says let's say seven hundred thousand whatever it is <clears throat> rupees. Okay, three months from down, three months down the line, now I and R becomes really weak. Okay, now I sell the car, I again buy another car. Okay, now the price is higher in terms of I and R, correct? So somebody rendering a report, my my dad would say, hey, you know. You, you last time you bought a car, it's only this much money. Now you bought the car this much money, right? Is it my problem? Because of the currency rate. I spent the same 10,000 US dollars in, in, in US, correct? When I'm converting to reporting currency, because of the Modi's, uh, you know, uh, whatever good thing he did, the economy, the currency become really weak, right? And uh, <clears throat> so when my dad accounts this, he said, hey, you know what, you spend a lot of money now. That's not my choice. That's not my problem, right? Yes? Do you have able to follow me? Yes. So for that situation, <clears throat> so we want to avoid the situation, right? We want to know how the money is spent and how, uh, you know, where it is spent exactly. I don't want to take into consideration. I don't want to drag into all this currency conversion. I will choose a long-term stable currency. Let's say US dollars, right? People say US dollars is a strong currency. Some people say Euro, right? There's a strong currency. Correct. So they will say because all the currency is compared against US dollars, mostly in US, so in, in the world, correct? So I rather take that as my hard currency. So take that as a third currency and then we call it a hard currency. <clears throat> okay, hard currency. Make sense? Yes. Okay. I have a and, question. okay, and then there's a global company currency. Global company currency is basically when you define a company, right? <clears throat> Let's say Coke, when they define Coke, right? That's a global company. From that client, from that, you know, as you know, you assign company codes to company, correct? You can define a lot of company codes and assign to company. The global company currency is at the company level. That's the difference between company and company code, right? In the previous sessions, you, I'm sure you know, right? So Rabina, you know, what's the difference between company and company code currency? Sorry, what's the difference between company and company code? Mm -hmm. Company. Company is a group and company code is a legal entity for reporting purpose. Right. So in many company codes could be assigned to a company, right? There, are, there could be many legal entities under Coke. Coke is a branch, Coke is a brand, not a branch, sorry, brand. Uh, it's a global, so you can actually use it as a global company currency as well, okay? When you define company somewhere here, let's see. You will, you will do that. So, but anyways, so you, you understand the concept of three, look, I mean, uh, additional two parallel currencies and then why we choose group currency and why we choose hard currency. Make sense? The company, the global company code currency will be somewhere when you define a company. If we go to enterprise structure, definition, define company. You got to talk to a company. See here. So this currency is at the company code level. Okay. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's a company level. Okay. It's local currency of the company. Okay. So this is called global currency because the company is in is in euro and under which you will have multiple company code currency. Okay. That's all called local currency. Great. So far you understand. Now what is the why we have to do this we already know because it's a reporting currency the money is coming from a group currency the parent company so we have to report to them okay and then in order to make the conversion happens we have to maintain the exchange rate table make sense that's called parallel currencies in sap now we go back to parallel accounting okay Can somebody tell me what's called parallel accounting? Any idea? 
do the transition um, under two different accounting principles. All right. So why we have parallel accounting? As you know, when in, in, in a globally, right, <clears throat> there are many accounting standards. Okay. There are many accounting standards like IFRS, US GAAP, um, GAAP, right? GAAP, US GAAP, IFRS, IAS, and there's a lot of them. Okay, GAAP generally accepted accounting principles. It is usually used in India and other lot of countries. <clears throat> okay, and US GAAP. US uses the generally accepted account accounting principles, but they have their own GAAP. US, they call it US GAAP and IFRS. <clears throat> what is IFRS? International Financial Regulations and Standards. So this is mostly used in European countries. IAS, international, I think it's called Indian Accounting Standards or, or International Accounting Standards. I'm not sure about that. It's International Accounting Standards. International, okay, international Accounting Standards. And there are some companies that use it. Plus, there is also local. Some companies, they have their own accounting practices, accounting principles. Okay, so I'm sure Coke has his own. And, uh, you know, for the, for a, what a, because the way they do business, they've been doing business for several years, right? Maybe, what, 60, 70 years. Right? And they have their own way of reporting financial statement versions and how they, where, which one they will call it revenue, which one they don't call it revenue and things like this. There's a lot of um, principles and engagements and protocols for them. So that's why they have all these different, different accounting principles. Make sense? Now, a company can have, yeah, can, a company, can a company have multiple accounting principles? Why? Okay. <laughs> And first of all, one is a different accounting principle. Why? I mean, what's what's so great thing about, you know, why there's a different accounting, right? So I know you guys are not accountants, okay? But there's a small, small differences in each of the accounting principles. And there's a the reason why, okay? So because the countries are different, the way they operate business is different. The way they are, you know, the geography is different, right? Um, somewhere, you know, something you get cheap in some countries, something is very expensive in other countries, the taxes. Excess taxes, customs duty, import and export, right? Um, there's a lot of in you know, a climate change tax. So there's different, different, um, um, you know, the forces, elements in each country demands them to have a different accounting standards. So one simple example, <coughs> um, you know, IFRS. I mean, they also change quite often, right? IFRS 15, a uh, 16. There's a 15. You know, they came up with some accounting changes, regulation changes, 2018, in the way the revenue recognition has to happen. So all the countries, all the company codes, all the companies, right? They have to change their accounting practices in terms of recognizing the revenue. Okay. And, and, and you could you could tell why. Okay. Um, what's a big deal. Okay. The simple example would be, again, I'll go back to this. Let's go back to the same example. Okay. So my dad, okay. He sends money from India. I spend here. Now let's take, think about this. Um, that's something he, let's say he also reports, right? He also has to have their own profit and loss statement, correct? I have my own profit and loss statement, balance sheet. And my brother in, in UK, he has his own profit and loss statement and balance sheet, correct? Because money spent, you have to record somewhere, right? That's called accounting. Now my dad also has in a group currency, in a group reporting consolidation, he collects all the transactions and record into his own books, correct? That's for consolidation purposes into group currency. My parent company make sense Are you able to follow yes sir. okay so there are con in, you know we can also talk about consolidation here okay what's called consolidation also called consolidation happens in group currency okay thank you Rabina. so consolidation happens in group currency so my dad just spends money and he needs to know how much, you know, these guys are spending money. So let's say um, I spend money on the laundry expenses, tallying expenses, and I go and buy sometime the dish, you know, laundry liquid. And I also go to, um, what do you call that? Um, go to a laundry store or, you know, by dry cleaning all this stuff. Make sense? And then I record them separately. Okay, let's take an example here. So brother A, okay. 
whether be okay so he has expenses like dry cleaning and then uh, give some examples Washing liquid, what's called it? Washer. And I should go to grocery store quite often. Washer, liquid, detergents. Detergent expenses, right? And then ironing, for example, right? Make sense? <clears throat> My brother B, he also has dry cleaning. And then let's say what else? Give me some give me some examples, please. Grocery expenses. No, 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 no. Let's limit to this. Oh, this? Yeah. Something okay, tailoring. Right? Tailoring. Uh, what's that? Dying. Okay. Dying as well. Great. So these are the different things they spend money on. Let me take this call. So when I record, brother A records, right? He puts this in one GL account. He puts this one GL account. He puts this one GL account. Make sense? Yes. Similarly, brother B records, okay? He puts in one GL account. This puts in GL account. This puts in GL account. All this go into there profit and loss statement, correct? Yes? Yes. So similarly, when the company operates here, the legal entity in the US, they have all these expenses. You could, you could tell, right? Manufacturing expenses, different different types of manufacturing expenses. Right? Very detailed, promotion, okay? And then um, here they have different types of expenses, okay? A company can have under promotions, let's say you're doing promotion expenses, they can have multiple types of, you know, small, small details, right? Very detailed, okay? That's the reason, that's, that's what I'm trying to get here. Now my dad here, okay, group company, parent company, if you want, right? The parent company doesn't care. You spend all this dry cleaning, $50, detergent expenses, $10, ironing expenses, $1. We don't know. We don't, he doesn't care, right? Right, he's not going to record all this because he's a group, correct? For his consolidation purposes, he's going to put maintenance expenses, okay? And he will have one GL account for maintenance expenses. So what will happen is he's going to record all this $10, $15, you have this. He's going to record everything under maintenance expenses. Yes. Okay. Makes sense, right? Because he doesn't want to know all the individual details. Right. And these people want to know individual details because, because when they record separately, so at the end of the year, they will know how much they spent just on dry cleaning so that they can go back and check why they spent so much money. Maybe next year they can reduce the expenses, correct? Yeah. But overall, he's not going to care about all this, right? How often you wear a shirt, how much dirty you make it, you roll on the floor, you roll on the dirt, he doesn't care, right? How often you change, take shower, he doesn't, he doesn't care. He's going to put everything under maintenance expense. Make sense? <clears throat> And how this happens. This goes to one separate GL account in his books of accounting. Make sense? Yes. So this is one financial statement version. Man, I'm getting really better. A. There'll be one financial statement version. Do, 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 do. There's another financial statement for him, okay? This is for him B because he is a different company. And here the financial statement version C. <clears throat> when I say the financial statement versions, okay. Here they have three different GL accounts. They will map all these three GL accounts into one maintenance expenses. Similarly, all this they'll map into one maintenance expenses for both the company codes A and B in different company codes, like come to country. So consolidation happens this way. Okay. Under group currency. Make sense? Yes, yeah. Make it. 
Yes. Understood or trying to understand? Yeah, understood. <clears throat> okay. Make sense? Okay. Now let's go back again, accounting principles. Why? So we talked about parallel currency and what is the use? And I gave an example, how the group currency will be used for consolidation, which you just saw, right? <clears throat> now, so just an example, I can add one more here. Now I'm gonna add this one company code in GBP in, in, in UK, GBBBBBB, this company code in US, US dollars, and this company code in Nepal, what's the currency? What's RS. I'm sorry? Rupees. RS. Yeah. Yes. 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 Question? Yeah. You're saying rupees, RS. I'm sorry? RS, right? Yeah. Great, so this is where consolidation happens. This is a group currency. Okay, again, I'm gonna make one more here. This is a company code currency. Local currency. This is again, da da da. This is again, what's called? This is a group currency. I rupees, okay. Got it? Mm -hmm. Add some colors to your life. Okay, now it looks better, right? See, it looks like a statement now. <clears throat> it looks like a financial statement, great. Now let's go back to the accounting principles. So why we have different accounting principles? Why the country has different accounting principles? Like same thing. So here, <clears throat> Um, what would be the best example? Let's say this company, okay, sells um, here in the US, he's making sales. Okay, now switch to company code. He's making a sales and he's giving a discount, for example. Okay, make sense? Yes. Maybe I'll do this somewhere else. I'll just open this here. What time is it? Four o'clock already. So let's say company A making a sales. That goes to a credit, right? Then he also spends money on promotions. Okay. He's making a sales of $10,000 and is spending $300 promotions. Now company B is making a sales of again $12,000. Okay, let's just $10,000, easy to understand. He's making promotions of $300. And then he said delivery fees. $100, that's $200. Okay, well, there's a freight charge. Okay, now let's say they're in two different countries, right? The accounting principles could differ. <clears throat> the accounting principle here says that, you know what, you can treat this as a revenue, but however, you spend $200 on the promotions, correct? So your revenue is only, how much? $9,700, okay? Yes? yes. So you were, Net revenue, net sales, for example, it says only 9,700. 
okay now the delivery fee is 200 now here you said delivery fees expenses right so you minus expenses let's do this here net 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 sales it says okay 9700 as per the accounting principle accounting principle something like, let's say put us cap example okay now ifrs says you know what this is wrong okay the promotions instead of promotions delivery fee should be reduced from the sales make sense ifrs could say you know what that's fine i agree with you but however instead of promotions promotion you do whether you make a sales or not correct right promotion does not have a direct impact on sales yes right right i can do a lot of facebook promotion and spend lots of money it doesn't really bring revenue correct there's no one to one relationship correct right the car sales there's a lot of promotion that happens do you think everybody will go and buy a car who are looking at the promotions no right yes or no yes yes no. so somebody said yes so there is no direct impact on the sale so ifrs could come back and say you know what i don't agree with this delivery fees yes because there's a direct impact on your sales when you make a sales you deliver otherwise you don't deliver right they're going to switch back and said you know what we don't agree with this promotions should not be included in the sales make sense so promotion will stick out separately okay they're going to put um, they will remove this 200 and put it here under the bottom line okay uh, so delivery yeah so promotions delivery fees will be included which is i suppose this sorry this is supposed to be 200 300 right and what's my net sales here 9800 correct make sense yes so as per the ifrs my net sales is 9800 as per cap is 9600 however end of the day your profit is the same correct <coughs> make sense what's your net profit yes. your net profit will still be the same it doesn't change anything makes correct right abina right your net profit whatever it is would not one second it takes call correct so in the in the both is accounting principles right company a and company b okay <clears throat> the accounting principle is different but the net profit is the same they just drive where things will go in place right <clears throat> Hey, this is not the right value of this is not how you value asset this is not how you treat the expenses this is not how you you know uh, capitalize this is not how you um, you know handle uh, production expenses things like this so that's the difference between the accounting principles make sense yes. <clears throat> now we saw this accounting <clears throat> we saw currency we saw consolidation now we go to valuation <clears throat> okay so what's called valuation in 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 valuation it's the same story right that's called always called legal valuation that you saw here in a company code currency we saw a legal valuation okay so there are separate there are several types of valuation in sap um, and why right okay? let's do this again valuation <coughs> so we have legal valuation and we know what's called legal valuation right so profit center valuation group valuation right inventory valuation right does inventory valuation so it's also you know different types of valuation so there's a legal valuation is always 
based on your <coughs> excuse me based on your uh, your local company code let's say you buy an asset so when you buy an asset so you you spend like ten thousand dollars you buy an asset and you wanted to capture this as a legal valuation make sense right let's say on the profit and valuation mm -hmm. let me search a little bit here So legal valuation, let's say you sell a uh, simple example. So when you sell a product to your external customer, okay? So what's the company, what's the company do? What's the purpose of the company? Can somebody answer, Ravi? What's the main Is purpose it? of a company? Sales uh, hmm? to generate income. Okay. Right. So, well, sales, not everybody sells, right? Um, well, there's a non-profit as well. But anyways, so there is to manufacture goods and services and sell to somebody and make revenue, right? Anyways. Okay. So when they do it, they talk, where do they sell? They sell to their own customers, correct? Local customers. That's called legal valuation, correct? When they sell to a local customer, they sell in the price that they wanted to sell. That's a legal valuation because company code is always legal. It's all statutory unit, right? So let's do this. Your brother, let's go back to this here. Your brother, okay, he makes sales and he started selling in a cars. So he bought a car and he's selling a car and he's selling to a customer, okay, a car. Okay, make sense? Let's say $10,000. He sells a car to $10,000, that's illegal. Let's say he, he is selling the car to his, his son, okay? So his son is under the profit center, okay? So this is legal valuation. When he sells to external customer, he sells for $10,000, that's legal valuation. Now what's called, there's something called profit center valuation. Within the same company code, right? He has a son, okay? The brother has a son who is, who is also taking care of the company a little bit. And he is maybe managing a different division, okay? And that division, he wants to buy a car. And this, his, this brother wants to sell his car to his son, right? I mean, nobody, nobody gives anything free to anybody. But he wants to give a discount. Okay, he doesn't want to mark up, you know? So he said, the car you're selling for, let's say $8,000. Make sense? That's called profit center valuation. When I sell the car within profit centers, this is my price $8,000. <clears throat> Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, now my dad here, he's doing valuation, right? But at the end of the day, the car is transferred from here to here. So far, the, the, so far, this car was $10,000 recorded under his group currency and consolidation, correct? Now I sold this for $8,000, correct? So I, $10,000 car, I sold it for $8,000, which means I have a loss of $2,000 to my company, to brother A, incur $2,000, correct? He only sold it for $8,000, correct? Is that right? Right? Yes. That is, hmm? <clears throat> so in accounting, this is how things work, right? He sold the $10,000 for worth of $8,000. Okay, so he got cash $8,000. Okay, correct, and a loss of $2,000. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Make sense? On the other hand, this guy got a credit of $2,000 because he bought the $10,000 call as worth of $8,000. Actually, within the company code, there's no profit or loss, correct? Do not understand? Yes, okay. Rabina, do you understand? We no. have to sell a call. So this guy passing on this ten thousand dollars worth of call to eight thousand dollars to him, okay, to his son. Make sense? Correct. Yes. Now, is it a loss? So he incurred a loss of two thousand dollars. Correct. Yes. When he sell to external customer, that's a legal valuation. That's a legal price. He's make ten thousand dollars. Great. And how much ever profit he makes, we don't care. But to his own son, he is giving at a reduced price for eight thousand dollars. He losses ten thousand, two thousand dollars. Correct. Yes. At this profit center, correct. But this profit center is getting two thousand dollars more. Correct. Because he's worth the car is worth ten thousand dollars, but he's only buying for eight thousand dollars. Correct. So he is getting a profit of two thousand worth of two thousand dollars more, correct? So at the company code level, this inventory is transferring from one profit center to another profit center. That's all, correct? His loss is gain, correct? Yes. At the profit center level, is different. This profit center loses two thousand. This profit center loses two thousand. Well, it gains two thousand. But however, at the prof at the company code level, it's the same. That's legal valuation, same, correct? Yes. Yes. Andy, sorry, Andy, you understand? Najaf, you understand? Najaf, you on mute? Nobody stop. Nikhat? Yes. U UK? Yes, Jay, yes. Kai? Yes. Uh, can I be? Can I just summarize or to see if I'm correct? Yes, of course. So uh, the brother aid um, has a car that the book value is ten thousand. Sounds good. And then, and then he sells this car to or transfer this car mm -hmm. to his uh, subsidiary, his son, for eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So, but uh, they are um, of course. Uh, it seems like it. Uh, the brother A lost the two thousand dollar because uh, it uh, sell at the price that less than the mm -hmm. book value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But because since they are in the same company, brother A, mm -hmm. they um in the at the end of the day, there's no profit and loss in it. Mm -hmm. Is this what you mean in in this case? Exactly. Okay, great. So that's called profit center valuation. Now there's something called group valuation, right? What's called group valuation? Which is this guy. Can somebody tell me what will happen to him? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So let's let's make a small entry here, right? So sales is sell ten is sales is eight thousand. Okay. Loss two thousand. Make sense? The first guy, right? Yes. Yes. See, this is, this is not even accounting, okay? Now, this guy purchases <coughs> 8,000, okay? This is not the right account. This is not accounting entry at all. Accounting entry is more comp more complicated. I'm just trying to and explain you in a very simple way. Make sense? This is what it does, right? At the end of the day, okay, end of the day, there's no gain loss at the company core level. Just within the profit center, he gains and he loses. Or sorry, he gains, he loses. Now, at the group level, Okay, we have to transfer this to him, right? Because we are reporting to him. When we report to him, he said he doesn't care. He will remove in tech company loss and profit. That's called group valuation. He doesn't want to know any in tech company. <clears throat> he will remove all the in tech company elimination of profit and losses. Make sense? So he only records a transaction. That's a $10,000 itself. Okay, because somebody is gaining something, right? At this level, everything is his one family. So within the company, if there's a make and profit or loss, he will remove it. So group valuation basically called removes intercompany. You're right, right? Your dad, does he say, you know what? Dad, I sold my car to my brother. I made $2,000, right? He would be happy. 
right? He won't be happy, right? Right? It's like you so, take a, um, you take a food from from your brother's plate. Do you think he's going to be happy? <laughs> so in the uh, consultation, what will be the um the value record? Ten thousand or eight thousand? Because we ignore the profit and loss in the inter company Correct. trading. Yeah, so we, eight thousand, right? No, the the car mm. is still a, still ten thousand dollars, right? <clears throat> The car was ten thousand dollars because mm. I think that I mean the entries are not right, so we can make it both ten thousand here. So let's this is this is this is how it should be. Okay. Purchases ten thousand dollars worth of goods he purchased. <clears throat> okay, but he paid a cash of eight thousand dollars, so the gain is two thousand. Okay, ten thousand dollars sales, but he only sold it for eight thousand dollars. He got a cash of eight thousand dollars, so loss is two thousand. Make sense? So when this transfers over, he removes this loss. He doesn't want to know. Remove this. Remove this. You stole from my brother's, you know, your other son's plate. I don't want to know. So only this will go. Make sense? Mm -hmm. When this goes inside, it will be sales and purchases knock off each other. This guy mm -hmm. has no impact, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Make sense? His balance sheet shows nothing, correct? At the group level. Yes. So just imagine. That's how. The company code accounting and the company code B accounting will impact group currency. Group currency is at the group level. He doesn't want to know the, all the intercompany profits and loss. And system SAP system will automatically eliminate. Okay, when you define all this profit centers, all the settings. <clears throat> now, only one setting I could show you now: um, the consolidation. Right? Remember, I told you here. I think this is a good session. You don't agree, Rabina? I do. So, um, let's say when they when all this GL accounts, a company code can have different GL accounts, right? This company code can have different GL accounts, right? So that's what it is. Now they all map to maintenance. Let's take an example. So let's say company code. So here's the thing. Um, consolidation data, this is a bad example. Okay, so that has to be in the consolidated data here, that has to be field open, which is not open here. We can fix it. It's going to take some time. So here, um, if you see, let's take a maybe other company code. Um, we are one one, right? Yeah, uh, I think we kind of, uh, which one we can use? Let's use 1000. See here? So in this, in this account, 1000 company code, right? It is a trading partner. Trading partner is your group company. Okay, this is the consolidation happens. Trading partner means it's a group company. What's a group company? It's like company. There's a difference between company and company code, right? So here we mentioned this chat, this GL account, okay, which is let's say dry cleaning expenses in this company code 1000 will flow into my group, my parent company, which is a trading partner. They call it trading partner. If you go here, it will list all the company, not the company code. Make sense? Trading partner is called company. What is trading partner? <clears throat> okay. Yes. Yes. Here is where you mentioned the group account number. Okay. So this GL account 6014 will post into will post into one group account number. This is called this is called group GL account number. This is how consolidation happens. Make sense? 
So similarly, the other company code, let's say 2000 company code can have another GL account. They could be mapped to same GL account at the company code level, at the, sorry, at the group level. Make sense? Same example here. Because my dad doesn't want to know all these individual expenses. He wants everything mapped to the maintenance expenses. What do I do? Company code A, dry cleaning expenses. I put the group account here. Company code B, dry cleaning expenses, group account. Same thing for all the individual GL accounts, company code A, individual GL accounts, company code B, B, I'll map to maintenance expenses. And then I say, what is my group account number for consolidation here, trading partner. So uh, trading partner is uh, uh, the GL account of another company code. Is it right? Yeah, you define right. yeah you define the GL account at the company level. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, in normal situation, like uh, for um for uh, there's a uh, two company, one parent, one child. Um, there's uh, always a trading partner. Um, GL account in the subsidiary company. Is that right? Because at the end of the day, exactly. this um, this amount will transfer to the parents. Correct. I thought you would ask another okay. question. Your company code. How many child accounts your company code have? Only one. What? No. So there are three chart of accounts, right? One company code chart of accounts, which is an operator chart of account. And there is a group chart of account. That's a country chart of account, country specific. Come on, guys. That's the first lesson. Yeah, three types. Company yes. code chart of accounts. Um, uh, country chart of accounts and um, group chart of accounts. Make sense? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the group chart of accounts is usually defined somewhere. If you go to, do, 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 to, if you go here, not here, uh, maybe here, da, 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 da. not here. Uh, if you go to, Assign chart of accounts to company code somewhere, somewhere there. Where is it? Can somebody help me? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry, click the wrong button. Oh, no, no, stop, 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 stop. It should be here. Master data, for operations. Here, assign company code chart, <clears throat> company code here, see? Chart of accounts. So you have this company chart of accounts, this is a country chart of accounts, okay? And this is the operator chart of accounts, and this is a country chart of accounts. And the group chart of accounts, which is for consolidation, I think you assign somewhere, okay? Um, where, 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 where? where? OB62, OB30. Okay, I think it's easier. Let's see if this works. OB13. List all chart of accounts. See, here you mentioned the group chart of accounts. Okay, this is a consolidation happens. At the chart of accounts level, okay, the mapping is here. You can go back here. This guy has one chart of account. This guy has one chart of accounts. And this is one chart of accounts, right? So here is a mapping happens. Where is it? This is my operator chart of accounts. One second. Okay, so this is group chart of accounts. This is where you block. This is where you map to group chart of accounts. Make sense? The group chart of accounts map to group, sorry, <laughs> operator chart of accounts map to group chart of accounts here. And then here, your country, your operator chart of accounts map to the country chart of accounts here. Okay. And like I said, this used for consolidation in the GL master data, 
that's a maintenance field trading partner and then the group chart of accounts group account number that's how it gets consolidated so um or so the chart of account of the sub subsidiary company will put the parent company chart of account in the group chart of account field correct you're right okay okay who still all right, so that's the end of the session and hope you guys, okay, here's the thing. Um, uh, I'm sure you will, you know, uh, watch this again and again, understand this, but then again, you have to digest this. You have to, it has to sink into your mind and heart, right? Otherwise, it is like, it's not very interesting like watching a, you know, that is your favorite movie. So you just have to get along with this. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah.